Today, we're diving deep into some major changes in the Canadian mortgage rules that are set to kick in this December 2024. If you're a first time home buyer, investor, or just curious about how these changes might impact the housing market, this video is for you. And make sure to stick around to the very end of this video because I'm going to be asking Jeff what his predictions are for the real estate market in Surrey, BC, and the whole entire Fraser Valley in 2025. Today, we're going to be breaking down everything from extended mortgage periods to higher price caps for insured mortgages. And we're going to explain what these changes mean for you and the overall housing market. So stick around. We got some great insight to help you make sense of these new rules and how you can take advantage of Let's get into it. The two major rule changes we're looking at here are first, the extension of the maximum amortization period from 25 years to 30 years for first time home buyers. And second, the increase in the maximum price limit for insured mortgages from 1 million to 1.5 million. Right, this is significant because it changes who can qualify for a mortgage and how much buyers can afford, especially in price share markets like Vancouver and Toronto. But before we get into all the implications, let's start to unpack each detail. Let's talk about the first big change, the 30-year amortization. So what this means is that first-time homebuyers who put down less than 20% can spread their mortgage payments over 30 years instead of 25 years. That five-year extension means your monthly mortgage payment is going to be lower, which can help a lot of first-time homebuyers who may be tight on cash flow. For example, a 30-year amortization can improve purchasing power. Right, but keep in mind, you pay more in interest over the life of the loan with a longer amortization. So you really need to understand how the payment system really works. It's not just a free ride. It's just a trade-off between lower monthly payments and paying more interest in the long run. So if you're a first-time home buyer, this could make home ownership more accessible, but it's important to think long-term. Absolutely. Now, this change only applies to insured mortgages. This means buyers who are putting down less than 20% still have to pay for mortgage insurance, which protects the lender, not the borrower. And sorry to cut you off there, Jeff, but if any of you are planning on making the move to Surrey, BC, or anywhere in the Fraser Valley or Metro Vancouver area, don't forget forget to give us a call. The number will be in the description below. We absolutely love getting reach outs from every single one of you. So make sure to call, text, or email us if you're planning on making the move out here or around the area. You can also schedule a call or meeting using the link in the description of this video. You can also get yourself a free new JC Holmes Thermal Travel Flask mug or a free t-shirt. All you have to do is drop a comment saying, I have subscribed in the comment section of any one of our videos after subscribing to our channel. And I will send you out one of these items for absolutely free. Shipping might be delayed due to Canada Post being on strike, but that's something that's out of our control. And we also got these new really sick phone holders as well. Dude, actually pretty cool. I use this on my desk all the time. Now back into the video, Jeff. Let's move on to the second big change, the increase in the cap for insured mortgages. Previously, if you wanted to buy a home over 1 million, you need at least a 20% down payment. Now with the new rules, you can qualify for an insured mortgage on homes up to 1.5 million. Now that's a big game changer, especially in markets where $1 million barely gets you an average home like Toronto or Vancouver. Hoover, even in actuality, in some parts of Fraser Valley. Let's say you're looking at a property around 1.2 million. Now, today, you would need 20% down, which would probably be around 240,000. Starting December 15th, you can actually just probably put down around 7.5%, which works about 95,000. So 240,000, 95,000. That's a huge difference. But here's the kicker. Even though this change opens up a lot of access, it doesn't necessarily mean that all buyers in this price range will take advantage of it. A lot of buyers looking at properties over $1 million may already have that 20% down saved up. So planning is a big thing. Great point. So the real impact of this change will likely be seen with first time home buyers who needed a bit more flexibility. It could also be helpful for those who want to hold on to more of their cash rather than putting everything into a down payment. So now that we've gone over the changes, let's talk about what these new rules might mean for the housing market as a whole. Jeff, do you think that this will trigger a buying boom? No, no, well, not exactly a boom, but it could definitely give the market a little bit more momentum. We're actually seeing that right now. These rules are expected to make home buying more accessible for some, but experts are saying the impact will probably be hmm, moderate. The real drivers are still things like the interest rate, which has been trending down recently, and there is a big economic recovery happening. And with a more active market, you might even see home prices increase slightly. When you make it easier for buyers to enter,
enter the market, demand naturally goes up, which can push prices higher. So while these rules make buying a home a bit easier, they could also end up making homes a little pricier too. Right. It's kind of a double-edged sword. More accessibility could lead to more competition for homes, especially in already hot markets. But if you're planning to buy soon, it might make sense to start preparing so you're ready when that time comes. It's all about planning. We say it all the time. Of course, these changes also come with some risks. Increasing accessibility is great. It also encourages people to take on more debt, which could be risky if the economy hits a rough patch. Exactly. Now, the government is trying to stimulate the market while maintaining financial stability and insured borrowers have historically shown higher stress levels financially. So while these changes open up more options, it's crucial to buy within your means. Always consider not just what you qualify for, but what you can actually afford. It's easy to get excited about what's possible with these new rules, but smart planning goes a long way. So if you're a first time home buyer or even looking to move up in the market, here's some tips. First, talk to a mortgage broker or financial advisor who can help you understand how these changes apply to your specific situation. Also wanted to mention that's very important for you to get pre-approved. That's why you want to talk to that mortgage broker. So many first time home buyers just get right into shopping for properties when they don't really know what their budget is yet. Second, do your homework. Check out neighborhoods and property types that fit within your budget and don't forget to factor in the full cost of home ownership, not just the mortgage payments, but also property taxes, maintenance, and utilities as well. Exactly. And remember, the lower monthly payments with a 30-year mortgage might feel easier on your wallet now, but weigh the long-term cost as well. It's a good idea to plan for both short-term benefits and the bigger picture. Now, Jeff, how will these new rules for first-time home buyers impact the housing market in December and going into 2025? Rick, it really comes down to buying power, and it affects them by having more options. So when you have buying power and you have more options, it could create more competition. And we're going to talk about this too. What will that mean for the prices? More competition, more people coming in. While there is more buying power, that means there's a lot more people in the active market. More multiple offer situations. It could happen. Here, right? it's, 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 we're seeing it happening again. Do you think that this will just put more Canadians in debt? And Jeff, with projections suggesting that the Bank of Canada may lower interest rates to around 2.75% by the end of 2025, how do you think this potential shift could impact mortgage rates and housing affordability by summer? Well, I'm glad you mentioned that because interest rates do play a big role. Would the banks come down to a 0.2.75 at the end of the year? I don't know. There's always speculations. But let's talk about what interest rates mean. The fact that the interest rates have come down right now, those are the variables. And does that affect your fixed? No. So now what actually has happened and what we've seen happen is with all this announcement with the interest rates dropping, interest rates dropping, it's created a lot of buzz. Buyers started getting excited again. Now I'm going to play a little scenario for you here. If you have four buyers, three of them were excited by hearing all the news. Oh, interest rates dropped. They're getting excited. They want to get back in, but they haven't talked to a mortgage broker yet. Haven't really understood what that meant, but they go in and they put an offer. All three of these people, different people put an offer on a home. Mm. Now the fourth person knows their stuff. They actually know the value of the property, know the mortgage, know how it all affects it. So they're the actual bona fide real buyer that's actually pre-approved, ready and ready to go. The other three are more kind of like the emotional, don't know that everything going on. What's happening here, and this is what happened before when all the prices were going crazy, is that you got those three people, they're going to be putting an offer on, and then you have the fourth. So now you had a multiple offer situation. Did those three just drive up the price for that one fourth person, right? That could happen. This could drive, this could make an impact in terms of making the prices go up again. So it, could there be a potential aspect? What happens with these interest rates? Yeah. How long is going to go? Don't know. And Jeff, did you see that very recent article about more than half of all mortgages with Canadian banks are set to be renewed in the next two fiscal years and Canadian banks could face a mortgage war? What's that all about? All right, Ricky. Now, here's the deal. RBC analysts are saying that we're about to see Canadian banks competing hard for mortgage customers. Kind of like a mortgage war. Why? Because over half of all Canadian mortgages are set to renew in the next couple of years. We're talking about 270 billion in renewals for 2024 alone and another big chunk in 2025. Now, with interest rates showing signs of coming down, a lot of people are likely going to be shopping around to find the best deal on their mortgage. Banks don't want to lose their customers, so they're expected to start lowering their rates and offering better terms to keep people from switching to other banks. Now, this means more options and potentially lower monthly payments for homeowners. 
Now for homeowners, especially those whose mortgages are up for renewal, this competition could be a chance to score a better rate and reduce their payments. But on the flip side, this competition could cut into the bank's profits. Still, it's definitely something homeowners should keep an eye on. Could be a good time to start looking at options and see which banks offer the best deals. Now that wraps up today's discussion on the new mortgage rules in Canada. These changes are exciting, but make sure to approach them with a clear heart and solid plan. And this video is for informational purposes only and not mortgage advice. Please consult a licensed professional for personalized advice. We are not liable for any decisions made based on this content. And if you found this video helpful, give us a thumbs up, subscribe. Let us know in the comments, are these new rules going to change your plan? And are you more likely to buy with these options on the table? I'm Ricky J, the Realtor, and this is Jeff Chatta from JC Homes, and we are out. See you all in the next couple of videos we got coming out because they're absolutely great. Make sure you guys tune in. Bye, everybody.